I've gotten so caught up in wanting to grow, 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 and I treat myself like something that needs to be fixed, so much so that I have forgotten all the great qualities that makes me me. And action. Hello guys, welcome to As If The Podcast with your host, me, Asia, my queen. That is me, that is she, I am where, what's another, ah. um, I want to be, how are you doing today? I am doing great, I'm doing very, very, very good, <sighs> guys, this past few weeks, uh, maybe a month, maybe a month and a half has been very, very, very emotional. Oh my God. I need a break. I need a break from all the emotions, all of the revelations, like things are just attacking me. Realizations have been attacking me. I need a break. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't need to know why I do this. I, I don't need to know that right now. Please allow me to just be pretty for a second. I finally was able to lay a sickening under eye. When I tell you it was so nice and just like a little powdery, uh, like very, very, very smooth started crying and it was one of those cries that I couldn't stop and I had been working on perfecting my under eye for a very long time and that day was the best I had done in forever but anyways we're doing amazing we're doing great now what has brought me through that has been self-care. Literally treating myself like a baby. I've given so much attention to myself. I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, can I get some personal time? I've just had to carry myself through sickness and death. And you know what? I had to do it. So then I was looking in the mirror and I was like, right now, you have to be completely obsessed with yourself. You have to really just think about what a person would do if they were obsessed with themselves and wanted the greatest, best things for myself. And I just had to go through the day just like that. My dad asked me if I could come over for Easter. My siblings and him were gonna be at his house. And I was like, you know what? I'll come over after my self-care day. A couple hours passed and I was like, you know what? I actually wanna take the whole day for (laughs) self-care. And I text him, I was like, dad, I just need today. Like I need it by myself and he was understanding. And I appreciate him for that. Those are the type of people you need to keep around for sure. Just people who understand that sometimes you just can't. You know, sometimes you just can't or don't want to. That's an option. And um, yeah, I really appreciated him for understanding that because, man, if you wanted to beat me up for this, like, sir, I... I can't feel any lower than I already am, you know? So I was like, thank you for understanding. So today we are going to talk about being obsessed with yourself. Why it's important, what we can do to become more obsessed with ourselves, um, what keeps us from completely focusing on ourselves and what we need for our sanity. 
So, mm, where do I start? Where the fuck do I start? Like, for me, I I had thought that I was obsessed with myself or I really loved myself because I have kept up with a look. Yeah, I've been able to keep up with a certain look that I really appreciate, you know? The lip gloss looks great. The concealer looks bomb today. <laughs> But I had realized that I wasn't really doing things for myself internally. Um, I've said this so many times, like you guys know that I struggle with crippling anxiety, like to the point I can't breathe. Um, I'm sweating all over the place, mostly my hands. I was looking at the palm of my hands the other day and there was sweat just dripping down. I was like, okay, <laughs> you're just sitting there. I was literally sitting and having an anxiety attack for just like, I don't know, no reason. I haven't really done my best to come up with a routine that could guide me through these anxiety attacks. I just pretty much masked it i masked my anxiety for a very long time you know by seeking outside validation you know when other people are really affirming towards me i tend to calm down because a lot of where my anxiety comes from is not being good enough and i start getting anxious of not being good enough or not doing something good enough so when other people are affirming to me it allows me to calm down and and um allows me to get out of my head and makes me feel okay i'm accepted i'm i'm good so that's just how i've been able to really deal is pretty much like i said seeking outside validation, maybe smoking weed, which so crazy. Weed has never helped my anxiety, like not once. <laughs> I don't know what people are talking about when they say that weed helps calm down their anxiety because it is the exact opposite for me. I really, I lose my mind. Like, mm-mm. Mm -mm. It makes me so anxious. It makes my heart beat faster. My hands sweat. And then people are going to be like, oh, what about the strain, the strain, the brain, the crane? It's, I have tried many strains, brains, and all that. Being high, not being, I literally live in my head, right? So not being able to access my thoughts makes me nervous and that's what being high does for me like it makes me like not i'm like no brain up there nothing up here at all so that never helps but for some odd reason when i'm anxious i want to smoke you know so it's like okay like but now that I think about it, when I'm anxious, I want to do more things that make me go down a destructive path. It's weird. Like, I ruin shit more and more when I'm anxious. When I'm calm and collected, I guess it's, I guess when you're anxious, like you can't really like think straight. So, yeah, I guess I can understand that. I just pretty much figured some shit out, you know, by myself. Anyways, so like I said, I had to really look in the mirror and be like, dude, what can you do that reminds you that you love you? One thing I had to do is I had to be patient with where I was. Right. I had to realize that I was in a specific space and I had to accept it and I had to be 
patient and gentle with myself through it. I think that's what I consider self-love is being able to be patient and gracious to yourself. I find that a lot of times I'm not gracious. You know, I penalize myself for a lot of things. I remind myself of times that I did not show up the best. I remind myself of those times way more than I remind myself of the times that I did show up the best. So I'm constantly in this space where I'm just reminding myself over and over again what terrible things that I've done and the great things kind of get pushed back. And when I'm thinking about what self-love looks like for me, it's being able to see myself. and not relying on anybody else to see me. And making it a priority for me to see the good things in me more than it is a priority for other people to see all the good things in me. I want people to think that I'm just amazing. I want people to just love me so much. I think I'm I think I'm human for that I think I'm normal I don't think I don't think I'm alone when I say that I want people to like me I really want people to like me and sometimes that could be a detriment to me because I sacrifice my ability to see myself because I'm so worried about how other people are going to see me. I've gotten so caught up in wanting to grow, 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 and I treat myself like something that needs to be fixed. So much so that I have forgotten all the great qualities that makes me me. Like some of the most fucked up things that have happened to me has made me who I am. Some of the weird ways that I think or behave makes me me. And being caught up in this almost hamster wheel of needing to change and needing to grow and needing to change and needing to grow and oh my God, this, oh my God. I I don't wanna water myself down. You know what I mean? Like, this is how I grew up. This is this is what makes me, me. And like a couple episodes ago, I I talked about identity shifting and, and becoming a new person. For me, I still find it to be necessary because there are ways that I want to grow and change still, right? So, I'm still in that place of creating new habits and new ways of thinking and stuff like that. So, and through this process of wanting this identity shift, I want to be able to truly love myself. So I find it to be so backwards if all I'm doing is just focusing on everything I have to change all day, every day. I wish you guys like really knew. (laughs) (laughs) how obsessed I've become. And just recently, like I said, I just looked in the mirror. I said, I want to love you fully, all of you. And I want to be so fucking obsessed with you. And I said back, well, girl, let it go. Okay. Let the shit gizzo. Stop trying to change yourself, okay? Love me. That's it. I just need you to give me love. And the love is is patience and grace. And oh, it's okay, Asia. Oh, it's it's all right. Okay. 
you know, you, you, you fell. Oh, you fell. Girl, you fell. Oh, I fell. <laughs> but you're going to get up and you're, you love yourself through it. I had this debate with my brother. Oh, it's so annoying debating him. Oh my God. <sighs> we were talking about how you cannot like your body, but you have to love it to make the changes that you want. I am a firm believer in that. You... It's okay to not like a certain way you behave. Let's just say that. But you have to love yourself through it. Okay? Like, you can't... There's there's no... I, for me, I could say for me. I've never been the type that responded well to harsh punishment. Like, if I did something wrong... The coach is screaming at me and slamming and, and cussing in my face. And so I don't react well to that. You're going to come to me. You're going to speak to me with respect. You're going to tell me what you expect out of me. And then we can move forward. Okay. And that's how I want to speak to myself. When I am disappointed in myself. 